Hi and uh, welcome to this short texturing tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to make a quick tile level texture which you can use on a game environment. Uh, what you see in front of you at the moment is a small um, sci-fi scene uh, which I've made a quick texture which you can see. Uh, this tile level texture I'm going to go through the basics in Photoshop and suggest some bits and bobs which you can then add your own things onto later. So if we open Photoshop, at the moment you can see there is a blank tiles.psd which is what where we're going to work in and on the right which is tiles.3.jpg which is what we're hopefully going to end up with. Um, so basically what I've done to start with is if I just switch back to Max I've unwrapped a piece of geometry which I can then apply to a tileable texture. Um, when you're applying your, your textures in Max, you can control your tiles and your bumps and whatnot in the material editor. So, if when once you've finished your Photoshop texture in this tutorial, don't uh, don't worry if it doesn't show up exactly how it how it's done in Max because I've already set up the material in a certain way. That said, let's get to it. Um, the first thing what I normally do is I'll reference my texture by uh, material so in this case it's like a metal kind of tiles um, I'll grab some metal some sort of rust some vague idea of how I want it to look and uh, then I'll start on the form and just get in the general shape of things in in some sort of order that I want so the main thing that comprises of this texture is the square tiles so if I look down my layers I've all got a lot of preset layers in this uh, file which um, which basically build up the image. So if I select, select this one, I've got squares. Uh, this is just a basic um, shape for the square in the image. And to do this, all I've done is simply used the marquee tool um, and drag and select at an area which I filled. You can do this in a number of ways. You can just use the gradient tool, or perhaps if you want, you can. Uh, you can use the render cloud or different clouds if you want some sort of noisy kind of irregular fill. Um, also, if I just make a new layer here, I can do this a bit more accurately. I can show you exactly what I'm doing. So there we go. So we've filled the shape now. Uh, the next step I've done is to use the layer styles and bevel to give the impression of an elevated surface. Um, to do this, if you see the new layer is called layer 6, a general good idea is to name your layers so you're not getting confused. Uh, in this case I'm going to call it squares A, you can call it whatever you want, tile 1, etc. Um, and we can go to blending options. And uh, There's a whole list of effects and this is basically the same throughout most, most of the Photoshop versions. I've, I've been using it since 5 so uh, it hasn't changed a big deal so no matter what uh, version you're using you should be able to get some some sort of uh, editing suite like this so what we're going to do is bevel and emboss and this one we're going to be doing an inner bevel um, you can customize these settings to however you want generally I've keeping this tile quite quite depth so we get quite a lot of sh sharp edges and then I've just played with the, the size modifier and the soft and you can depending on how you want the tile to be you can chamfer it some more or make it make it really clean and crisp etc so um, that's how to basically govern where the light is coming from and if you look below you can also do more with that light by adjusting the shading angle uh, the one of the important things in this this modifier panel here is the global light if you're using a, a continual light, light source through all of your textures there, there's an option called global light if you want to adjust it for something you have to turn it off um, it, be careful when you're doing this because it's going to adjust a lot of things for your textures on different layers so I normally work with this switched off just so I've, I know that I'm controlling it myself rather than Photoshop putting light where I want it to so in this case we want it coming from 90 degrees which is directly above you can then adjust the altitude and say the contours and things the contours um, is specifically it's quite useful if you're making something like gold but in this case we're not so I've just used a, a simple um, 
a simple bevel so there we go that's as basically as far as I take it with the square to start with so the next uh, main form or basic object in the texture is the rivets so if you look I'll turn one of the old ones off and in the top right hand corner of the existing square there's a rivet there um, this is basically created in the same way as the square or the tile so I'll create a new level layer I shall call it rivet B now to do this instead of using the square marquee tool we're just going to use a circle tool no you, you can paint these yourself if you don't want to use the, drag them out if you prefer to get some kind of random shape in there rather than the preset you know, standard box circle but anyway so we filled this in well, just to prove you that's there it's filled um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add another layer um, blend option to it so what you can do to uh, do this is uh, you can right click and copy the layer style and paste it on I don't think you can do that in the older version of Photoshop so I think in the, the older version of Photoshop if you want to copy layers you have to drag them off from one one layer style till the next kind of thing where in this one it's just right click copy delete etc so if we go back in on the new layer into the bevel and emboss panel open it up and this time we don't want an inner bevel we want uh, we want more of a pillow emboss where you can see now but the size is a bit too much so if we scale it down we can get it like that um, there you go and that's basically how we create the um, the, the basic commo components of the tile. Now we can simply right click and duplicate and when we duplicate our layer and press V and you'll bring up your select tool if it's not already selected and if you hold shift you can move it just in one axis so in this case it's just just horizontal so it just gives you the edge of, of accuracy and then you can duplicate it again and you can move it up or down say vertical and then within five seconds you've got your basic shape so there we go that's basic shape for um, for the tile for the texture um, what the, what I've done then is I will um, I'll duplicate these shapes and fill it what a good rule of thumb is because I'm doing this quick uh, um, is to use the ruler so if we put on the ruler here obviously it's a square tile so you'd expect it to be you know symmetrical so you'd want no matter how say four from four across four down this tile is not going to be the right size so you're, you're going to have to be careful with your scaling and such so when if you've got the time make sure everything's to scale um, so once you've got all your scale your basic s shape set up all I've done is merged everything down and uh, then duplicate it to merge it down you can do it a number of ways but because we've got layer styles if you merge them down you often um, create additional shadows where you don't want to so say at the moment if I merge one of the the new rivets down if you keep looking on the screen there you go in the bottom right hand corner it's added um, its layers to another layer and created a deeper shadow we don't want that to happen so what I do is um, I'll create a new layer with nothing in it and then I'll sh I can merge one rivet down the others until we've got a whole whole shape with no layer styles right this means that uh, obviously Photoshop's not going to be ca uh, calculating any more uh, lighting on this object so it's now basically flat so what we can then do is we can take this object and duplicate it across the screen um, until you get the, uh, the full tile pattern like this as you can see so once we've done that if I just get rid of these we get a setup like this square grid. This grid, however, is a bit different to what you'll end up with because I've started to doodle on it a bit. Um, just simply, just to, I haven't got a whack on, so I can't be very accurate at the moment, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, all I've started to do is just to to play with the idea of drawing some cracks in. You could do this with the dodge and burn tool, and that is O, I think, on the shortcut key. You can adjust the pressure and make it make it darker and such stuff. So if you're unhappy with some of the edges that uh, the blending tool's given you on, on the past layers, you can go in and uh, adjust it some more. So let me turn on the rivets as well. So that's the starter already. You've got, got the basic form from the objects. The next thing what I've done 
is I've started to add some decal to it, the picture, and this is just some simple splashes and cracks. At the moment, it doesn't look a great deal, um, but what this is is just some simple uh, grayscale information I've copied over from another image, and then at, using the um, the layers dialog, you can adjust how you want that the new uh, decal layer to affect the image below. So at the moment, it's set to darken. Uh, to make this kind of cracks and st and uh, splodges, all I've done is I've uh, used some different clouds. So if I open a new image, I'll quickly show you the kind of thing uh, what I did. So press D for your default colours, which is just black and white, and I've pressed X to reorder them. Um, then I've gone down to filters, then render, then clouds, then same again apart from different clouds. So at the moment you can see these thick black or black lines appearing I then invert it till they're white and then I go to mm, uh, image adjustments then levels then I've taken the, all of the sliders to the far right so I get quite a crisp black color and then this, this almost like what white lightning here um, if you want to create lightning lightning from this image it's very simple you just press control U get your uh, hue saturation panel up you can tell it's colorize you can play with the saturation and there you go there's a simple filter light lighting effect that you can overlay on something else but anyway we're not doing that at the moment what we're going to do is we're going to you can select all of this or just part of it so if I s use my can my uh, marquee here the rectangle I can press ctrl C or go to edit copy copy section of my image and then all I've done I've pasted it into here so if I get rid of the splashes layer a second I've got this um, section of the image I can then delete delete the black because the blacks isn't what's going to be making the impact on the tiles below um, then you, c you can basically adjust or move this uh, this um, new layer to wherever you want these cracks and uh, simply then tell it how you want how you want them to adjust or affect the image so simply multiply something like that you can adjust the opacity whatever you want use the transform modifier control you know rotate it place them where you want um, this is a bit more of a, a random quicker way of adding little bits of decal rather than paint it on yourself if you don't want to do that obviously um, you could do that as well. So if I just switch the original one on here. Now, what I've the next step I've done from this point is um, I've gone through the, my reference images and I've added some more metal effects to try and uh, bring out a bit more detail in the texture. So if I switch on this one here, which is a linear light effect, and I'll show you what the image actually looks like before the filters and whatever is applied. If you look there, it's just a standard. It almost looks like a piece of concrete, but it's not. Let me show you what I got it from. Um, there you go. It's just taken from a rusty piece of metal. All I've done is I've copied a section out. So if I show you again what I did, I've copied this piece of metal from that picture. I've desaturated it, which I showed you in the hue and saturation tool a second. You can basically control how much colour or lack of colour Photoshop gives to a layer or image on the whole. So I've desaturated it and then I've made it tileable. So if I just delete this a second and show the original. What I've done to make sure that it's tileable, you can do it in a number of ways. There is a filter offset which basically it will cut an image up into four and then stick it back together which you'll have to heal or clone or whatever I've done something different with this one to make it tileable what I've done is I've got my marquee tool I've copied one edge this being the left so if we paste that we get another layer I then move it to the right hand side I flip it on the horizontal axis so now both the left down this side and the right down this side now meet up if I tile them next to each other and then but then I'm left with this seam down the middle here so if I just point that out for you because this is one of the things you get oh, from this there is a seam right down there which we are going to get rid of so to get rid of the seam there's a couple of ways you can do this you can either use the eraser tool to 
generally work out that seam or you can do what I've done as well which is to merge this new layer into the original so now we're left with with both of these layers on the same so to get rid of this seam all I've simply done is I'll select the healing brush which is the one above the clone stamp I'll go right to the top here I'll press alt and click and it defines a source and then I can copy that source straight down the seam and Photoshop calculates um, the colour differences and merges them together. You can do this a bit more better, better than I can, but just to show you, they start to blend in quite simply like that. Okay, so if I get rid of that image and set it back to linear light 35%. The next thing I've done is added a metal texture on overlay. This texture is basically exactly the same as the one I've just shown you. If I put it on full, there you go. It's just a simple rusty texture which I've made tileable or dabbed off Google or, or another CD or something like that. So I set it back to how it was. And then I've added on top a simple colour map, which you can't see it does a great lot because it's on a low opacity. But this colour map is taken from the rusty panel, but apart from I didn't desaturate it. So now we're, we're kind of getting to uh, our end texture. The last couple of things I've done is I've added some some slimy rusty colours on top just to uh, add that extra bit of wear. So this is taken this is taken from Google as well. If I just turn them all on now, you can see where it's coming from. And they're all on dark and, and then a soft light or multiplier to exaggerate it. Um, if I turn this back onto normal and full, you can start and see it's kind of almost like a green liquidy. Color. So 